Hey y'all, I'm Bridget Chandler um, and I'm the third grade math teacher from Span Elementary. So if you're from Span, shout out to you guys. Um, I miss y'all. I love you guys. Um, but if you're in JPS, that's awesome. We're all one big family. Um, so today we're going to review something called equivalent fractions. And I know all of you have learned about equivalent fractions um, throughout the year. And so we're going to review that. Um, but before we get started um, talking about equivalent fractions, I think it's really important to um, cover what a fraction is, just in case some of, some of us have kind of forgotten what that is. And if you have, that's completely okay. So I'm gonna go through this anchor chart with you guys, um, and we are going to fill it in together. Um, and so parents and students, if you're watching, um, when we're done with this, you are able to pause the video and just refer back to this um, in case, you need a little refresher um, when you're doing your practice at home. So um, let's start with fractions. A fraction is a number that names equal parts of a whole. Um, and something that's really important in that is equal parts of a whole. If they're not equal, then we can't name the fraction. Your parts have to be equal, that's so important. Um, and so it is parts of a whole figure or pizza or um, I don't know, when you're baking, um, when you're baking a cake and you have to put in one third cup of milk, you're not gonna put in less than that or more than that because that's not what the directions call for. It has to be equal, it has to be exact. Um, and so now let's talk about equivalent fractions. Um, and so when you hear the word equivalent, what word do you think of? Equal, yes, equal. Equivalent fractions are two or more fractions that name the same part of a whole, and they are equal in size. Um, and so when we think about fractions, we also think about the two parts that they have. Um, and there are these two big fancy math words called a numerator and a denominator. Um, the numerator goes on top and the denominator is on the bottom. And so the numerator names the parts um, that you're describing. And the denominator names um, all of the parts. So think about um, you and your friend Bob are going to a pizza restaurant. Um, and you both order a small pizza. So say the pizza's cut into four pieces, you each eat one piece. Um, and so your numerator would be how many pieces you ate and your denominator would name the total amount of pieces that you have in all. So numerator over denominator is equal to part over whole. Um, and so right here we have a little quick example that we're gonna do together, um, and we're gonna fill it in. So if you look right here, you see two shapes, two rectangles. Um, this one, we're gonna show one half, and on the bottom one, we're gonna show two fourths. And so when I look at the fraction one half, um, do I refer to the numerator or to the denominator to decide how many equal pieces I need to divide my rectangle into? Yes, we look at the denominator and our denominator is the number two. So I'm gonna divide my shape into two equal pieces. Okay, so if my denominator refers to how many equal pieces there are total, my numerator is what's gonna tell me how many pieces I need to shade. How many pieces um, am I referring to? So my numerator's one, so I'm gonna shade in one. So now this picture, this rectangle, is showing the fraction one half because I have shaded in one out of two pieces. So the next we're gonna move on to two fourths. Um, and as we just did in one half, you guys told me that the denominator tells you how many equal pieces. So I'm gonna look at my denominator for two fourths. And that is the number four. So that's how many equal pieces I'm gonna divide this next rectangle into. So let's count and make sure. One, two, three, four. Four equal pieces. And the numerator is going to tell us how many of those equal pieces to shade. My numerator's two, so I shade two. Now, if I look at these pictures, does it look like um, my pieces, my shaded parts are the same size? Yes, yes, it does. Even though the amount of pieces I shaded are different, the size is still the same, and that's what really matters when you're comparing fractions. I might have a completely different set of numbers here, but the size is going to be the same. 
Um, and so we're going to say these are equal. That's what we're going to write up here. Now, let's move on to this next example. So we're going to have to shade in one half again. So we know that one half means there are two equal pieces. And the one tells me to shade in one. So now again, we're going to shade in two fourths. The four is my denominator, so that's how many equal pieces that I have. There's my four equal pieces, and I'm going to still shade in two of them. Now look at those pictures. Look at the shaded parts. Do they look like they're the same size? No, they don't. It's like saying, say you and Bob go back to that pizza restaurant again, and um, you order a small, Bob orders the large. Okay? And you eat one piece of your small pizza, and Bob eats two pieces of his large. Um, Bob is obviously is eating way more pizza than you are. And so, while t one half and two fourths might be considered equivalent fractions, if it does give you a model, and one of their models is larger or smaller than the other, it's not going to work. They're not going to be equivalent. So we're going to write unequal. So, like I said up here, um, the important part of these definitions, equal. Fractions are equal. Um, and so, if you see something like this, you can automatically just know I cannot make equivalent fractions from that because my holes are two different sizes. But if they are the same size, then you are good to go. Um, and so let's look down here. We're also going to talk about how to create equivalent fractions. And that kind of sounds scary because we're going to have to do things like multiply and things like division. And I know that's scary, but it's easy. You guys are brilliant, and we're going to do it great. So let's start with the fraction 2 fourths. We have two-fourths. So, so first, let's multiply. Um, and I like to just multiply by the number two. Um, let's double it. Let's multiply by two. So let's say two times two and four times two. Because when you're dealing with fractions, whatever you do to the top, you also have to do to the bottom. It's like making things fair. It's like going to Walmart with your brother and mom says, oh, I'm only going to buy your brother a present. You don't get anything. And so that's not fair, is it? We don't like that. We want things to be equal. We want it to be fair. So whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. Um, so I'm going to multiply by 2. So guys, what is 2 times 2? 4, yes. So I put that on top. And 4 times 2 is 8. Good. It's like saying when you multiply by 2, remember you just double the other numbers. So 2 times 4, I would say 4 plus 4 is, yes, 8. So that means that 2 fourths and 4 eighths are equivalent fractions. And if we drew a model, we would absolutely see that that is correct. Um, and so now we're going to try to divide. So let's take 2 fourths and we're going to divide by the same thing we just multiplied by. We're going to divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2. Because whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So what is 2 divided by 2? And if division is hard for you, just think to yourself, um, what can I multiply by 2 to give me 2? Um, you, do, you do the opposite. Um, and you kind of just fill in the blank there. What can I do to 2 to give me 2? You would multiply by 1. Good. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then you would say 4 divided by 2. And if you don't know what that is, you would say, okay, well, what times 2 would give me 4? You just work backwards. 2 times what gives me 4? 2. So that tells me that 2 fourths is equivalent to 1 half. Um, and that's something that you can do at home. That's something that um, you can make your own examples and multiply. It, it's really cool because when you're creating equivalent fractions, you can use more skills than one. You're not just um, refreshing your brain on fractions, but you're also refreshing your brain on multiplication and division and adding. Um, and that's really cool to use more than one skill at one time. So let's practice right here in this small little space. 
Let's practice one example, just in case you're confused. Let's pick a fraction. Uh, what's your favorite fraction? Pick one. Three six. Three six. I love it. Three sixth. So let's create an equivalent fraction for three sixth. So we're going to multiply. Let's multiply. So like I said, I personally choose to multiply by two most of the time. So let's do that. We're going to multiply by two on the top and multiply by two on the bottom. Okay, so three times two. What is three times two? Great, six. Awesome. And six times two. Yes, yeah, six plus six is 12. Good. So three sixths is equivalent to six twelfths. Um, and twelfths, they're a little larger than we normally go. We usually only start with halves um, and do thirds and fourths, sixths, um, and eighths. We usually don't go to twelfths, but that's okay. You're multiplying, you're recognizing that they're the same size. Um, you're using your brain, you're using your skills, and I love it. So that's how you create equivalent fractions. Um, and so I want to give you something that you guys can um, do at home. You can use construction paper, you can use notebook paper, you can use any kind of paper that you have, whatever resource you have, um, and create this equivalent fraction matching game. If you are in my class at SPAN, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you have this board game, this, this little board right here, basically, and right here you start with one half, one third, one fourth, two thirds, and three fourths. And those are your bases. Um, and so if you want to create that, you're going to need to create a board that looks kind of similar to this, where you have these five fractions lined up. Um, you can choose to put the picture or you don't have to. I think the picture helps. Um, I'm a visual person. And so if you like the picture, please draw the picture. If you don't, that's up to you. Um, and so you're going to start out with something that looks like this. Now, then you have to create your pieces that you can use to um, sort, basically. And so what I did was draw out um, seven squares, and I put these fractions in the squares that, with pictures that match. Now, your next step after you drew that out would be to get some scissors um, and cut them out, and then mix them up and sort them out. And then say, hey, mom, hey, dad, hey, grandma, hey, grandpa, brother, sister, whoever's at home with you, and say, hey, guys, can you come check my work? Um, and this is something that you can do more than one time. Um, it's not something that you have to, you know, write on, and it's like, like a test um, that you can only use one time. This is like a, a game that you can play um, at home that's also educational and that will help you learn your equivalent fractions. Um, and so if you choose to do that, you can pause this video and jot it down, draw it out, and um, get creative, and use that in your um, free time or in your educational time when you're having school at home. Um, so yeah, just a refresher, equivalent fractions. Equivalent means equal, and fractions are um, numbers that represent parts of a whole. And so equivalent fractions are two or more equal fractions um, that name the same part of a whole. So they are equal in size. Um, so thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you learned a lot. I hope that um, you guys are staying well. Um, wash your hands, stay home, um, and keep reading. Love you guys.